Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, another exciting uh, delivery here today for me. Um, a couple of these Nano Swinsed Ultimates. Um, now, I'll post some links uh, above, uh, you know, in the, in the description and stuff, and perhaps in the comments and things. Um, there's a few things um, I'll point out right from the start. Is there's a guy um, you should you should check out his blog. I can't. I'm gonna, probably going to mispronounce his name here. It's Ilez J's blog, I think it is. Um, but let's say I'll put it put it in the, the, the link above. Um, his blog is my point of reference for some of this stuff because he's done a very thorough review of uh, these chips. Um, and if you're not familiar, familiar with what uh, a Nano Swinsid is, you know the SID chip for the Commodore 64, you know the 6581 or the 8580, um, those are failing over time. So um, I forget what it is now that create, create the Nano Swinsid. Um, Swinkles, that's right, originally. Swinkles produced uh, the Nano Swinsid, which was using um, an App Mega um, MCU. Um, to replicate the functionality um, of the original SID. Um, now, there were some deficiencies with that. Um, and as I say, I've got to thank uh, Ilez J uh, for some of, pointing out some of the differences here. Um, but it, it, in particular, the lack of readable Oscillator 3 and Envelope 3 registers. Those were the reason why Alien didn't sound quite right and R-Type, you know, I suspected that at the time when I did some tinkering with my um, Nano Swinsids. Um, I suspected that some of the registers were not being read properly, um, or there was no facility to read them. So yeah, that you know that's confirmed by let's like say that blog. That blog has confirmed that. So these have been produced by a couple of Hungarian guys, um, Matej. I'm going again, again. I'm going to uh, you know pronounce these names incorrectly. I'm sure Matej Sebok, uh, A.K. Code Killer, and Mihaly Horvath, um, also known as Hermit. Uh, yeah, sorry if I've just butchered your names there, but uh, yeah, those two guys have got together and produced um, this. Um, now, there's, this, this, there's a lot of extra features and functions that this provides, actually, as well as you know the, the readable oscillator three and envelope three registers. Um, one of them is the mouse and paddle support. Um, I'll just take this off. Um, for transit, what he's done, he's put a socket on the bottom, so I've got a spare socket, actually two spare sockets, that's really cool. Um, so these have been manufactured uh, recently, he's got a quite high demand for these. So, you know, you can see the solder, I would say, is pretty good, it's functional. Um, I might just clean them up myself a little bit, but that's just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Before I'll do that, I'll test it, make sure it's working okay. But these are, you know, let's say these are made to order, um, he's studying, I think, at the same time, or maybe I've got a full time job so it's very difficult for him to find the time to do these um, and the car oh, look at the size of the soldering down there that's incredible um, I don't know if you can see that it's like a Q, is it a QFN type chip or something it might not be um, but it's very 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 small um, but anyway yeah I'm sidetracking let's just get back to the differences so I've mentioned the paddle and mouse support uh, which is something the original Nano Swinsid um, couldn't provide um, this has also got external audio in bit fade support proper ADSR bug support um, Fast ADSR attack rate, um, Lazy Jones and 180 fix. I think it's some sort of um, light gate test bit workaround. Not really sure what that means, to be honest. Um, proper 23 bit noise waveform calculation, which is interesting because I think uh, that was one of the things that Bewak, um, and it was Bewak actually, I've got to thank for, for getting me onto these. I didn't know of these until Bewak uploaded uh, his video, and I think he was talking about the Lazy Jones fix initially. Um, but one of the things Bewak mentioned was the noise. Um, Generator was not very accurate on the uh, you know the original Nano Swinsid, so there's a better like I say 23 bit uh, noise waveform calculation there, so you get better random numbers. Um, this outputs a full three volt peak to peak, to peak um, output vo you know voltage there on the for the sound output without um, a 1k load. So it's apparently that's the same as an 8580 um, improved filter quality, uh, 16 bit with the resonance table for both SID models, uh, which is quite cool. Um, improved waveform calculation, full 16 bit, um, high resolution combined waveform tables. So, a lot of this stuff is not going to mean much to you. To me, it just says that actually it's very accurate, it's very precise, it's very, you know, it's cleaned up, it's refined. Um, also, as apparently some enhancements over the original set, you've got clean anti alias bandwidth sound at high pitches, undistorted mixed digi tunes, and eliminated volume change clicks thanks to AC slash DC separation of master volume register uh, soft config so you can actually run a little utility on your C64 and configure this you know switch things on and off I think you can switch individual channels on and off if I remember rightly um, 
so that's really cool and there's LEDs on it which intensify uh, I think they represent the active channels volume or something so uh, we'll have a look at that uh, and it says LED displaying the active classic digi playback uh, or in case of new Mahoney Digi, the entire array acts as a view meter. So I'm not sure about that. Um, and again, like I say, these, all of these things, you know, I'll show you here. Just, I've printed them off. It's just made it a bit easier. They've come from um, LSJ's blog. So check out his blog. Have a good read of that blog. It's a brilliant blog. Um, I check that site regularly now because the guy is uh, very experienced, knows his stuff, and it's very interesting. Um, but nevertheless, let's. I thought we'll, we'll have try one of these now, and we'll run some of the um, you know the tests and things, you know, things that didn't work perhaps very well on the original Nano Swinsid, and see how it sounds. So I've got the Swinsid Ultimate in there. Let's switch this on. I'll just turn the volume up a little bit. You should be able to hear the ding. Uh, bear in mind, like I say, I'm running this in dual set at the moment, and I've got both um, connected up to the TV. So. There you go, there was like a little ding there. You might not have heard it. But let's let's load Alien first, because I'm really curious to see whether that works or not. That sounded a lot better. Now bear in mind this is just the nano on its own. I've got the other SID disconnected at the moment from the TV. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. I would say it's, it's not perhaps quite as good as a 6581, um, you know, an actual 6581. Maybe the filtering is the subtle difference, but that is significantly better than the original Nano Swinsid. It's uh, almost identical. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Spot on. Now one thing I'm curious about is, it seems like my 8580 is louder. Um, not sure why. Um, you know, the, the way the amplification, the little like, preamp there's wired on the uh, dual SID board is just the same way um, that it is on an original uh, you know, 664C to make use of the 8580. So it's not like there's some over amplification going on the uh, 8580 side. Um, not sure. It just could be that the bread bin output is not amplified quite as much. I don't know, I thought it was the same type of transistor. Is it not like a 2N quad 2 or something? Um, or similar? Um, not sure, but it does seem quite louder on the 858. So if I just get at the 858, so just leave the switch so Can you hear that? That's not as loud, so I'll turn it up. So it's just that on its own now. It's fine, absolutely fine. A big thumbs up from me there on that. That's, that's brilliant.
Right, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, I've got to have the mouse sideways. If I do that now, I can move uh, up and down. Uh, let me see this. Yeah, let's do it that way. Yeah, if I move sort of the mouse up and down, it goes left and right. And if I move it left and right, it goes up and down. It's it's bizarre. It's like it's transposed by 90 degrees in terms of uh, movement. I don't quite understand why that would be, actually. Yeah, you see, like now, I'm moving the map le left and right. It's going left and right, and that's down, that's up. So that's a little bit weird. Um, I think just to rule it out, I'm going to swap over the uh, Nano Swinton Ultimate for the other Nano Swinton Ultimate, just to see if there's uh, a manufacturing glitch or something there that means that it's inverted. It could also be configuration, actually. Might just check that out as well. Same problem, actually, uh, with the other Swinton Ultimate. So, I'm not really sure what's going on. It could be a configuration thing. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Before I do that, I'm going to put the original SID back in. 6581. I'll just test this with the 6581. Yeah, now you see the mouse is normal, the normal orientation. I'm going up, that's up, that's down, left, right. So, it could be a configuration thing. I'll have a look at that. Maybe the, uh, one of the axes is flipped or something. Maybe it's a configuration option or something. That's certainly possible. So I've got the utility here, let's uh, let's load that and see what that tells us. Um, yeah, so you can see, um, you can change the SID type there between 6581 and 8580, pitch, NTSC or PAL. Uh, that's interesting, that looks like that's set to NTSC at the moment, that's interesting. If we press L, is it L to move it across, how do you do it? Ah, okay. So selected is in red, so it's set to an 8580 PAL. Uh, LED mode, notes, inverted, read, write. So that's obviously just for the LED, this one. Start beat, yeah, you can switch that on or off. The audio in, you can allow or disable. Um, and then you can mute the individual channels. That's really cool, actually. I like that. That's exceptionally cool, actually. I'll tell you why that's so cool is if you wanted to set one of these up in a, a stereo uh, scenario, you know, using a dual SID board, a bit like the Time Mouth software one, you could get two of these Nano Swin SID ultimates and switch one of the channels off. Um, you've got the dig digi bit as well. Uh. Yeah, you could switch one of the channels off on one chip and leave the other two on the other chip. Um, yeah, or I have two of the channels on one chip, two of the channels on another chip, two different channels. You know, well, not with different channels, but you know, what, you, you, you certainly have one channel in common over the both chips, but you can have, uh, you know, a, a separation there, I guess, which is uh, is really nice. Um, I mean, you, you know, you could even be ambitious and actually have a three SID set up and have every single SID doing a different channel and then just mix, you know, one of the channels, one one of the SIDs across the, the left and right. Uh, that's that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, if you're watching this, Dave, can you consider doing a, a triple, <laughs> a triple SID board for us, please? Um, yeah, I like that. So, what else have you got? You've got reinit chip, so it just initializes again. Show configuration values at three. Uh, refresh, set program, set defaults, and exit. Let's just try showing the configuration values because I'm curious to see what that shows. Identification swim version U4 function as A5 clock PL. ID config, start the mute bit mask, audio in. Um, so I don't see anything there about inverting the actual um, XY axis on the mouse. So that could be a bug. Maybe nobody's spotted it at this stage. It could be a firmware thing. You can update the firmware on these. You, I think there's a utility you can run to load it, you know, actually do it from the C64, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I think we'll just test out a few more games, see what it sounds like. So I've set it in 6581 mode actually.
Yeah, I'm having a hard time trying to uh, tell the difference between that and an, an actual 658 wallet. It's spot on. Absolutely spot on. So this is with the Nano Swinsted Ultimate put into 6581 mode. Can it be 8580 here? Yeah, the 8580 is all louder. Well that sounds perfect actually. Amazing.
so that was a really short look at these uh, Nano Swinton Ultimates. Um, I take back what I said at the beginning of the video in terms of these being functional. You know, I mentioned in terms of the solder, yeah, it's functional. Uh, what I meant by that is, yeah, it didn't look that clean, but it just needed a bit of IPA. Now, you've got to bear in mind these have probably been sat around for a while after testing. Uh, they've been in transit as well, you know. Um, but just a tiny bit of IPA and they've come up like new and actually the soldering is very, very good actually. Um, because uh, I'll perhaps put you on macro in a minute, but the, the, the chips down here, the, the solder points on them are so small. Hats off to them for doing the, a, such a great job on that. Uh, seriously. Uh, I don't think in all the things I've looked at over the last few years, I've never seen uh, solder points as small as that actually. Um, I'll just put you on macro now so you can have a look. Right, so we've got macro on now. Uh, can you see how small the, this, the soldering is down here? This is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and this connection's all sides. There's two points here, points all the way around on both of these. So yeah, uh, despite my initial thoughts of it looking a little bit dirty, the job he's done is absolutely exceptional, really, all things considered, because they, they, they use the smallest size components on here, which I guess you need to, to be able to fit everything on the, uh, the board there. But uh, I think that's a crystal, yeah, 32 megahertz. So you've got your crystal, you've got your uh, app mega, it's probably an 88p. Uh, it might not be, actually, because these have been changed considerably. Uh, you can see the part number on there. Um, and underneath he's got a Xilinx CPLD. Um, I'm not sure what these are here. Uh, and again, I'm not sure what that is there. That's an app mill. Uh, but yeah, very nice, very elegant. Um, and it performs really well. Um, I think the only way this is, might be bettered in the you know months to come is by the FPGA SID. But it, you know that's going to be one of those things. I personally think that the only way you're going to tell a difference really is on a scope um, when you're looking at the you know the waveforms there. And, you know com compared to each other, there's going to be a subtle difference. The timing might be subtly better on the FPGA. Um, the filters might be better, but then again, they might be worse. Depends how how they're done. But on this, like I say, I, I'm very, very pleased with these. These are fantastic. I think it, the the the, the subtitle there of you know ultimate, you know uh, Swinted ultimate, it's justified. This is uh, a real achievement. Uh, so I think it, my only issue now is trying to understand what's wrong with the horizontal and vertical on the mouse. They seem to be inverted. It could be a jumper, a configuration thing, let's say, because there's few solder points on here. I think that says no PGM. Maybe that stops you from programming it. There's a few points like that. I mean, what's this here? HC, T, H, C. Is that depending on what type of chips you've got on the underside or something? I'm not sure. So I will contact um, the author there and um, put his name up here and uh, see if I can work out what the solution to that is. It's doing the same on both of the chips, so it's not like one of them's uh, you know got some sort of issue. I think it's, it's a configuration thing. Um, in a future video, I might do a direct sound out recording because that would be more useful. Perhaps someone else could do one of those on their channel or something. Um, anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.